Well, one man who very much looking like he is on his way to play his football in England is Darwin Nunez. A new, new kid on the cop. <laughs> say the mirror. Oh, you know what? I miss the English back pages of these adorable. awful puns. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, the, the talks really have said to have ramped up uh, key hours ahead in this move. Although we are hearing that even though this seems to be so close, Mark, with Liverpool, as, a, as late as today, Manchester United have been contacting his agent. What do you know about it? The situation is that Liverpool want the guy, but they haven't put a bid in yet. They haven't registered a, a, an official bid. They know what they expected to pay. Too high. United's position is the same. Benfica want, is it £100 million? Which they both think it's too much. So there's a, there's a sense between both clubs that Benfica and Nunez's people are trying to kind of create an auction, create a bidding war for him that would enable, you know, Benfica to get more money out of it. And I think that both clubs have been wary about putting too much emphasis on, on the deal. So Liverpool, I think, are the favourites because, you know, you've got Liverpool, wouldn't you? You'd go to Liverpool ahead of Man United. United, I'm told, are prioritising a central midfielder. Frankie de Jong is the guy they want. That is what Ten Hag wants. He wants to get a midfielder in. So if it means getting a midfielder in before they have to spend on a forward, that's what they'll do. Now, on yesterday's show, Stevie Nicholls said he would be happy to let Mane go for £40 million and spend more, we're talking some of these prices that we're hearing, up to €100 million Euros for a player like Darwin Nunez. But it's interesting because isn't it safer to stick with what you know? Would that be a bit risky to, yes, get a well, high fee there, but also then spend so much more money for someone who is unproven in the Premier League? To, to your point, Kate, it is safer to stick with, with, with who you know, but this, this is a game in which players age out of rather quickly, and you just have to look at this side of the table for evidence of that. So you, <laughs> clubs are always having... Are you including yourself? I, I, I just... You're this side of the uh, table, that's what no, I said. It felt like you are saying so, this side of the table. My, so my, my, my point being, so clubs always have to think about what's next and taking that risk and, and putting, putting a price on, on that risk. And, and, and the truth is, Sadio Mane has got a year left on his contract, he's 30 years old, he's already said that he wants to leave, so... If you can get 40 million for, for Sadio Mane, absolutely I think you do that. If it costs another 40 on top of that to get to Nunez, then again, for a 22 year old, I think it's worth it. I think it's also complicated to, to that point by Mo Salah also having a year left on his contract. Because as much as you may want to stick with what you know, all of a sudden what you know may walk out the door, both of them. For, for nothing in 12 months' time. And you've also got the situation at Liverpool where Minamino, they listen to offers from Minamino, that's 17 million not for him. Origi's going. Mm. If Mane goes as well, Mane, Origi, Minamino in, in one summer, and there's doubts of a Mo Salah as well, they, they have to kind of look to the future. Now, they brought in Leos Diaz, as we know, fantastic signing. Diogo Jota, again, fantastic signing, but they do need to bring somebody in who will be their main guy for you know, maybe the next four or five years. So that's where Nunes comes in. And so in that sense, and given the fact that they have had success with the previous signings with some of the names you just mentioned there is it not too risky then to be paying this type of money for a player that they've identified well i think and i know it's difficult for us mere mortals to <laughs> turn the page on a hundred million dollars and just say well yeah that's that's just the going price well that is the going price for this sort of talent at this sort of age uh and 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 while we kind of fixate on the number. I think if you're Liverpool, you're more fixated on the fact that you went into a Portuguese team and got a great player in Luis Diaz. And you have an opportunity here in doing the same thing, going to Benfica and getting Darwin Nunes. And because of the great result that you got from Luis Diaz and already the early returns from Luis Diaz, you're saying, I trust as a club that we can do the same thing with this guy, and that he can have the same sort of impact. Now, whether that's the case or not, we won't know until Darwin Nunez shows up. But I think what they see in the player is some of the same attributes they see in Louis, or they saw in Luis Diaz, and energy, speed of play, speed of movement, the profile of the player seems to fit Liverpool. And if that's the case, you're no longer fixated on the number itself, you're fixated. Is this a piece that fits into what we do? Is this a piece that makes sense for us? And if that's the case, you go for it. This is the way the market works nowadays.
when it comes to that and talking about him coming in at this stage as well, and you're hearing the likes of Manchester United still then, they, you did allude to it. You think that this player, there would be no worries that he would go for Liverpool over United? I mean, you guys know in football, they go with the monies as well, the money and the challenge. And I think with Liverpool, because they are losing players right now, Mane, Origi, Minamino, he's going to go to Liverpool and play. So I, if I was him, I'd go to Liverpool because they're going to win things. Man United have got Rashford, they've got Sancho, they've got Martial, they've got Ronaldo. Ten Hag thinks he can get more out of Rashford. So maybe United have got a stock there that they can get better performances out of. So Nunes might think, well, I'll go to Liverpool, I'll play and I'll win. So it's a fairly convincing argument, isn't it? I will. Don't, don't underestimate the importance of having played against Darwin Nunes, just like you played against Luis Diaz. It's not you're watching video or somebody sent you a tape or somebody referred you to the player and you saw him. No, no, no. You played against that guy. And you knew how difficult it was to keep up with Luis Diaz, or in this case, keep up with Darwin Nunes. Those are things that Jurgen Klopp is paying attention to and says, this guy fits us. Did, and I think that's important. Did the players talk to the coach about this? Well, I, I imagine so, yes. It's like, whenever the coach brings up the name, it's like, man, this guy's a handful. We couldn't keep a handle on him. He turned, he turned me this way. He turned me that way. He's, he's quick. He's strong. All those things you figure out right away when you're playing against somebody that surprises you, that perhaps you were not, you were aware that he may have been a good player. But now you play against him, it's like, man, this guy's so much better than I thought he was going to be. And he is a handful. I can't keep up with him as a defender. Yeah, you, certainly you would relay that information to whoever, whether that's the assistant coach or to you in club. And if you're asked about him, certainly you would also give your, your input and say, yeah, this is a guy that can certainly fit in. Yeah, you well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.